at some point there was a lot of discussion about training fasted burns more body fat. Yeah. Uh, I think <laughs> now most people accept that that's not the case, that perhaps the percentage of fat as fuel is increased when one trains fasted, but that overall in terms of loss of body fat, it doesn't matter if you train fasted or you train fed. Correct. Okay, I think um, that can't be stated enough right, um, exactly. by experts like you. Yes. Um, that doesn't mean that if one prefers to train fasted or with a minimum of food in their gut that they can't do that. Right. Like I like to train fasted, but I, what I'm hearing is that uh, women should probably ingest at least some protein, high quality protein, and maybe drink the protein in a protein shake yeah. um, form if they don't want to ingest solid food. Yeah. I think the easiest way for people to understand the basic idea of what low energy is and how this affects men and women is when we are looking at um, a tipping point for endocrine dysfunction. For men, we're seeing that tipping point at 15 calories per kilogram of fat-free mass. For women, it's 30. So when we're looking at baseline calorie needs before you really get into that endocrine dysfunction, when you're looking at those parameters, you can see why men do better in a fasted state or a low calorie state. But for women, our intake and especially our carbohydrate needs are so much higher because we have so many other functions that are reliant on that kiss peptin upregulation or downregulation, preferably upregulation. Um, so when we're just talking the basic calorie needs and what we're seeing, it's that dichotomy right there of 15 to 30. And when you start telling people that, they're like, oh, okay, I get it. Is that a biological aspect? It's like, well, you could trace it all the way back where, you know, men went out to get the calories in most tribes and the women were home and it wasn't advantageous to be pregnant under low calorie intake. That's why you have dysfunction when the calories are too low. But, you know, you can also feed forward to modern day now, and you're seeing that all this perturbance of hormone and the way we regulate hormone across the circadian rhythm requires more calories for women than it does for men. I know some men that basically don't eat all day and then eat one meal in the evening and they'll train in the morning. That's inconceivable to me because <laughs> yeah. within an hour or so of training, I'm hungry, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. which brings to mind what we mean when we say training. Uh, I'm a big believer in people, everybody getting ideally two or three resistance training sessions in per week and two, maybe three cardiovascular training sessions per week. Mm -hmm. That would be ideal. Yep. Um, one could potentially do more, probably not a whole lot less before you run into long-term health issues that you could offset. But I think most people can fit those in. And I'm very, frankly, delighted that nowadays there's such a push for women and men to resistance train. That yes. wasn't the case when I was growing up. Me. You know, I recall taking my sister to the gym for the first time and it's like, I think she was the only woman in the gym when we were in high school, yeah. except for a few female bodybuilders. And she said, well, I don't want to look like that. And I said, well, don't worry, you're not going to look like that. Um, but now you go to a gym and women are lifting weights, men yeah. are lifting weights. It's great. It's terrific. I've seen the evolution, right? When I was 16, one of my friend's brothers was a bodybuilder and he took us to the gym, kind of like what you did with your sister. And so both of us were like, oh, well, we want to beat those guys. So we got into weight training with him, not to be a bodybuilder, but it's been like the paramount throughout all of my athletic career. It used to be, I'd be the only woman on the lifting platform. And now it's like, you have to wait because there's so many women on the lifting platforms. I love it. It's great. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. As I mentioned before, I've had female training partners and they, they kill it. Yeah. They, they um, It's a lot of fun to have a um, female training partner also because um, not only is it cool to see the progress they can make really quickly, which surprises them often. You know, I think a lot of women think that, okay, it's going to require external androgens or it's going, you know, and, and what you pointed out that there are some barriers to women putting on mass quickly. Mm -hmm. I think I've noticed that strength increases can come really, really quickly. quickly. Yeah. Why is that? It's a central nervous system aspect. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, like, if we look at the culture of how a lot of us grew up, and I'm saying us like 45 plus, mm -hmm. right? The women were all the 90s supermodels, don't show muscle, that kind of stuff. So always been gravitated to cardio. 
even now, if you go to a gym and you're a new member, or you're signing up for a new member, and you're a woman, they'll say, hey, great, here's all of our spin classes and our box fit still, classes. You're still doing that? Yeah. And okay. there's a cardiovascular machines. A guy comes in like, all right, how much do you want to put on? Here are the lifting platforms, all the, you know, the weight trainings at the back. Starting to see a shift with boutique type gyms, but that's still the commonality there. So it's still that little bit of taboo. So when women start strength training, they haven't been exposed to that kind of central nervous system stress before. And the whole aspect of getting the nerve and the acetylcholine, which are, are little vesicles that you know hold the ability for the nerve to actually stimulate the muscle fiber, all of that gets trained really quickly. So the more that you train it and the more muscle fibers that are recruited for contraction, you see an increase in strength really rapidly. And slowly building on that for increased muscle bulk, because it takes a long time for women to put bulk on. Uh, because the driver for strength training is that central nervous system. Um, so it's great when we see higher doses, more volume. We aren't seeing huge hypertrophy. We're just seeing really good increases in strength. Whenever somebody, male or female, is concerned about growing too big too fast, um, I always remind them that resistance training is unique among different types of exercise in that because of the blood flow to the muscle during the exercise session, the mm -hmm. so-called pump, yeah, you get a window, a transient window, but a window nonetheless of what the hypertrophy could look like if you do everything else correctly in terms of recovery. So provided that the, um, the size of the muscle during the training session is not aversive to you, yeah. you're okay. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> um, which is unique among yeah. You know, training, it's not like when you go running, you get a sense of being much faster. You actually get the opposite effect. You right. you, you feel the burn yeah. in your lungs and the, and the pain of, the, of hitting the wall of your limits. And then hopefully if the adaptation takes place, then you can push past that next time. But with resistance training, you get a literally a physical picture and a, and a somatic feeling for what that hypertrophy could look like. Yeah. That's yeah. why on your physique competitions and bodybuilding competitions, they're out the back pumping before they go on stage. 